Hello Room 5 students. For today's activity, let's engage in one of our favorite things, mystery science. Let's watch together how a rainbow is made. So, gather up anyone in your home, your pets, stuffed animals, siblings, parents, grandparents, any family member, so that you can turn and talk as the video is playing. Let's get started. Hi, it's Doug. St. Patrick's Day. It's a time when people wear green and some people even dress up in costume. But for me, St. Patrick's Day always made me think of rainbows. I remember when I was young, seeing a rainbow in the springtime and getting on my bike and riding toward it, hoping that I could find a pot of gold. I never did get there. Someone named Joseph has a question about rainbows. Let's give him a call now. Hi, Joseph. I have a question for you. How are rainbows made? That's a great question. Normally, the sky outside doesn't have that many colors, just blue or gray like when it's dark and cloudy. But then, sometimes, a rainbow comes out. It's such a special thing when you get to see a rainbow. People even know the colors of the rainbow by heart. You've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. Scientists call it violet. But where do rainbow colors come from? How are rainbows made? Do you have any ideas? Let's discuss. How do you think a rainbow is made? Turn and talk with someone nearby. You should pause the video first and then resume when you're ready. For a long time, no one had a very good idea about where rainbows come from and how they get all those colors. Rainbows aren't like most colorful things, like things you can reach out and touch. For example, think about a red chair or a green frog. Those things get their colors from what they're made of. A red chair has red paint on it, and a frog has green skin. But a rainbow is different. It's not a thing you can reach out and touch. It doesn't contain colored stuff like a chair or a frog has. Instead, it's something that floats there like a big arc in the sky. And rainbows don't just stay there either. Not long after they appear, they start to disappear. It's really very puzzling what a rainbow's colors are made of or where a rainbow comes from. The first big clue about how rainbows are made actually didn't come from rainbows in the sky. It had to do with rainbow colors from pieces of glass. For a long time, people had noticed that glass pieces, especially ones with flat sides on them, would sparkle with rainbow colors when placed in sunlight. Scientists noticed that one of the best ways to get a rainbow sparkle was using a triangle-shaped piece of glass. It's called a prism. It was one scientist in particular who was very interested in this. His name was Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton wondered, was there a connection between the rainbow colors of a glass prism and the rainbows that we see in the sky. To figure this out, he bought a prism and came up with a science experiment. In a room, he covered his window like this to make the room really dark. Then he made a hole in the covering to let in a single beam of sunlight. When he placed his prism in front of the beam of sunlight, it did this. It created rainbow colors on the wall. Interesting, Newton thought. But how did it do that? Was the prism somehow creating those colors? That's what some people thought. But Newton wondered, could it be that sunlight itself is maybe a mixture or bundle of all the colors of the rainbow? If true, then maybe what the prism is doing, thought Newton, is it's separating white sunlight out into each color of the rainbow. But that seems unlikely, right? I mean, sunlight itself is white, if you had a bunch of different colors of paint and you mix those together, it doesn't make anything white. Look, you can see here it makes sort of a brownish color. But maybe light is different from paint, Newton thought. This is where Newton did something very clever. He took another second prism and he turned it the other way so that it would now combine all the rainbow colors of light shining onto it. When he combined all the colors of the rainbow, guess what he got? this, white light. So Newton proved the colors of the rainbow really do come from sunlight. 
But that still doesn't solve why a rainbow appears in the sky sometimes. I mean, it's not like there are prisms or pieces of glass floating around in the sky, right? Well, there aren't pieces of glass, but there are these. Water droplets. It's rain. Water droplets can do similar things as a prism, taking white sunlight and separating it out into all the colors it's made of. When we see sunlight shining on a bunch of water droplets, we see a rainbow. And it's not just raindrops either. Any drops of water in the air will do. You can find rainbows under waterfalls or even in the spray from sprinklers. Check it out next time you play with a hose. So in summary, Isaac Newton proved that white sunlight is actually a combination of all the colors of a rainbow. A rainbow is formed when white sunlight passes through water droplets in the sky, acting like prisms. That's all for this week's question. Thanks, Joseph, for asking it. Now, we have something special for this week's episode. My friends and I here at Mystery Science have created a step-by-step -step activity where you can experiment with sunlight and rainbow colors. You can find a link to the activity at the end of this video. Before you vote on next week's question, we put together some amazing visuals that we'd love to show you. Take a look inside, or if you don't have time, you can skip straight to voting. I'm going to have to record the bonus video as a separate video, so please look for that on our YouTube channel. Also, with the extension activity, I'm going to need to figure out a way to share that with your parents. I'll work on that today, too. For now, let's skip straight to voting. Now, for the next episode, here are the three questions I picked from the question jar a couple weeks ago, before we did our special episodes. If you already voted, that's okay. When this video is done playing, you can vote again. You can choose from, what was the fastest baseball ever thrown? Who invented the piggy bank? Or, why are flamingos pink? So submit your vote when the video is over. I want to hear from all of you watching. There are mysteries all around us. Stay curious and see you next week. Okay, so for today's challenge of the day. Which of these three questions would you like to explore next week? Send me an email and let me know where your vote stands. Also, give the bonus video a try. See if at the end of that video you have any further questions for Doug. I can ask Doug on your behalf. Let me know if you have a scientific question you'd like me to ask. Thanks for watching Room 5 and friends. See you next time.